Oh, that pulse bomb, you gotta watch it. Does it catch anyone? It gets rid of Clutch. Another crucial member of Classified is now down, but Chisakita comes alive. Only on themselves, they're gonna get the touch here. It's time to walk out to have some help. He survived from the Karma. Already two, make it three. Number two, Crackers are down. The PP Blunders can taste it. They're gonna lock it up. Yeah, that's right. 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 Sweat, tears, their very hearts and souls into getting to this point. The moment we've all been waiting for is finally here. A journey that's been filled with triumph, with loss, with the anticipated, and with the unexpected. From dominant performances to nail biting tiebreakers, in every player, putting it all on the line. We have our underdogs, who've come out of nowhere and taken everyone by surprise. We also have top teams from previous seasons, coming back and looking to rewrite their story. They're now here, hungrier than ever, trying to learn from past defeats and ascend to the throne. For some, this is a chance to make history. For others, it's to make up for the past, to make up for getting so close, but failing to reach as Four teams who have constantly fought to be the best in the limelight. Four teams who have battled through the darkest nights to reach the dawn. This is it. The final stretch. The battle for the title of champion. The stakes are high. The competition is fierce. This is where legends are made. One last gauntlet remains separating these eight teams from calling themselves champions. These teams for the past three months have gone through their ups and downs and they've worked so hard to get here. And now we're just down to eight teams here. My name's CBF and I'm joined here by Karma and we're here to bring you Frost Nova versus Krakens in the Transcendence tier. Our first match right now in playoffs and man, these are going to be some nail biters. Yeah, it really is. Heading into this game, just all that anticipation is finally here. We're in the champs bracket. Win, go home. Or win, go on forward. Lose, go on home. And you know both these teams are fighting tooth and nail to try to get to that next point, especially with it being the quarterfinals. you got four more weeks left to basically cement your name in history if you're one of these two teams. Many of these teams, you know, have not made it. And even if these teams make it, it really comes down to these games. There's not any room for error, really, as this is single elimination here. So... If you lose a match, you're going home. So you have to be very dedicated and you got to be on top of it if you want to make it and become the champion. Yeah, you really do. And also, too, going through the bracket, it's it's very top heavy. You see MI7 number one in the bracket, which I don't think a lot of people are weren't surprised on it. But we're not looking at that right now. We're looking at the four and the five seed Nova Frost or Frost Nova versus Krakens, two teams that they're going to be coming out here and they're going to be ready to battle just out here. And I think it's going to be very exciting to watch heading into heading into tonight. Frost Nova and Krakens are definitely some formidable teams. And MI7 have yet again proved that they are one of the best teams in Tranquility. I'm not going to go too much into them, of course, because it's not their match. But they went from being... I, I don't know if they were number one, but they were number one or number two in the Discord tier last season to being number one in Transcendence. So they have had an incredible time in Tranquility, and they have just proved to be some very, very formidable talent. Yeah, and it shows them too, like, hey, we've been, we're here to stay, but again, it's not their match. We're talking about Frost Nova, Krakens. Mm -hmm. Two teams that, going through their bracket too, heading in, heading before the event week, Frost Nova being 4-1, and one, now they're, four, they're this, now they fall to the fourth seed. It's going to be interesting to see what they, how they bring up to this, to this uh, championship bracket how tough and how different it can be, especially coming, especially being that four seed coming in. Playoffs is always a wild card. You can perform amazingly in the regular season, and if it just goes wrong for one match, you're out. So 
it's it's really hard and it can be really difficult for some of these teams once we get later in the bracket when these teams are going to get eliminated as only one person can go on. Yeah, it really can. I know both these teams are going to be wanting it, especially Kraken, Stu. We haven't really talked about them. Coming into the five seed, you know, it's these are basically the two teams that it's like, the, yes, the four and the five seed, and those are the two teams that you know that they're the most competitive, they're the most similar, being the closest to it in the bracket. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out together and if it's going to be a close match as we think it could be. This could definitely be a very close match on our hands, or... It could go the way that, you know, we weren't really expecting. It's it's a wild card, as I said here, in Tranquility and really in any tournament when it comes to playoffs. Um, it just comes down to these teams. We're on a brand new patch, of course. This new hog rework, anything could be up in the air. Yeah, it really couldn't. And also with that hog rework, it's going to it's gonna factor in a little bit, I think, with our map pick today, with the first map being Nepal. You have that one area in Temple, I believe it's called, where you got that pit, so a lot of teams can hook people in, but it's not like mm -hmm. Ilios in some sense, but Nepal is going to be our first map, something that I think it could favor both teams, especially with that Sigma comp that's very, very strong, and it hasn't really been touched on a lot, but I think that hog change, I don't really want to say it's a rework, because it really isn't yeah. a, a, all that reworky, it's just them adding one more ability, but I think it could be very really interesting to see what they do, especially with the hog change that did come out today. His numbers did get changed a bit. You know, he is going up from 150 per, uh, is it pellet or is it shot? I think it, I'm just going to call it a shot um, to 160. So he's gone up 10 damage. I don't know if that's just with his primary fire, but that's all he has now. So, yeah, so they, they have made a lot of tuning adjustments to him. And of course, Nade and a lot of these CC aren't going to be as powerful now because he has to take a breather. He can just cancel it and then just use it again. So these these abilities, these crowd control abilities that have usually been used to, you know, negate Hog's ability to do anything, you know, they're not going to be as effective on this patch. Yeah, it really is. And heading into this match too, Frost Nova, they are on a losing streak. They did lose to MI7, a team that we just talked about. And also they're coming back from a team from last week, week 11. They both face each other. So it's going to be sort of interesting to see who's going to come out on top. Last time it went to, I believe, a mat five. So it's going to be interesting to wow. see who comes out on top this time. Frost Nova came out on top last time. But Krakens are here to try. I'm guessing they're here to try to be like, hey, we're here to stay this time. We're not going to go into We're not going to go home too early. I think both these teams are hoping not to get eliminated right now. But these are going to be nail biters of matches. And, you know, I think if you're MI7 or one of those teams, you feel very confident. But I think once we get into the middle tier in that four or five seed, I think a lot of these teams, it could go anyone's way. And it's just going to be up to who comes here prepared and ready to show up. Yeah, it really is. I was I was here yesterday doing Harmony. It's really just the team who gets streakier the most. And Kraken's heading into the playoffs. They went on a 0-3 losing streak after that event event week. So it's interesting to see them try to turn it around, especially throughout the playoffs where they've won they've won two, lost one, so it's a little bit iffy for them. So far they've been so far it's just been a little bit of a rough patch since that event week. And I don't know if it's messing with their mental a little bit or just being like hey we we made our playoffs no matter what let's just take a little bit of a break sandbag a bit and now you got to come into these playoffs and be expected to win every single time it's definitely hard when you when you have a winning streak like that too there's a lot of pressure on you to perform and if something doesn't go your way i think sometimes if you don't have that strong mental it can really get to you and in this playoffs you, it, that can really cost you you know one team can take that little moment of you know lack of confidence and just turn that into a snowball and they can take it all the way yeah they really can and i think also heading into this map is going to be interesting to see what these two teams do because i believe the last time these two played on that first week they also went to nepal and krakens won 2-1 so it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top of this first time with them going to nepal first again it's going to be interesting to see what comps come out, especially, like you said, with the changes, with everything like that. Who's going to come out on top and who's going to end up falling and go down 1-0 in the series? Yeah, of course, we did say earlier, map is Nepal. And as you said, I think, you know, it could play into Hog, but I think uh, Nepal overall provides a lot of flexibility for these teams. I mean, just with all the different points, you got Dive, I've seen play, you got Brawl. You got the Sigma poke. You got the Sigma brawl. I mean, it's such a dynamic map that allows for so many different compositions. 
that these teams, it's probably a great pick where they can just experiment and see what happens in this first map, and then they can go into the second map. You know, if they haven't scouted super well or their scouting just isn't really working, so they can go into the next map and they can perform a lot better. Yeah, not that much too. All three points on Nepal are fairly different. You have you have Village, which is a lot more. A lot of teams like to run that Rhine, get to the point fast, sort of, for, sort of poke the point. But since Overwatch 2 has come out, we've seen a lot more of that pharmacy come out, a lot more spam, a lot more poke, a lot more sort of damage output than before. And then going into the Temple as well, you see a lot of these teams that like to run this sort of. You can run the dive, you can run the brawl, you can run all these different sort of playstyles. So it's going to be interesting to see what teams decide to come out on what's what hero, especially in this, especially in the trance tier where it can be, it's sort of like, I don't want to say everybody's picking the meta, but it's a lot of what, who feels the best on what they, on what they want to play it, especially since Sigma is very, the strongest tank, but he's definitely not a world beater right now. I like to say he's a little bit of a world beater, but he's not the only thing that's viable. A lot of things can be viable on a lot of different maps and it just, it just depends on if you can execute it correctly. I mean, World Cup is a great example of that, where we saw, I mean, Doomfist, Sigma. I mean, you probably saw every sort of composition you could ever play in that tournament. And we're definitely at a stage where you can run a lot of compositions. You know, I haven't heard too much about Roadhog. I've kind of heard it's a mixed bag where he might not be the most strong character, um, but in the right hands can do a lot of work. So we could see some Hog come out, but we could see Doomfist or really any other hero come out here yeah and also too one of the things as well that i want to talk about before we before we start about it we, we haven't even talked about the last patch those big support nerfs that came out yeah. and how it's sort of been affecting some of these some of these teams as well we saw it a little bit in the world cup with the support nerfs but Alari getting nerfed kiriko getting nerfed a little bit baptiste getting nerfed it's also a mix with that as well as the those hog changes that could be a different thing especially i want to talk about those send changes because he's a he's a guy that got buffed yeah. and nerfed at the same time even though i think a lot of teams a lot of people are sort of thinking his discord nerf is a lot worse than i think it actually is it's a lot more of just you have to just stick it on one person and you have to stay los of him so it's a little bit difficult but getting that 25 health back it changes him back to basically overwatch 2 release then a little bit where i think he's still fairly strong and i think teams just gotta take a little bit to figure him out especially with a dive with against that sigma comp could be good but one thing that's really big with the sigma comp is just the amount of damage that can get put out onto teams with that bastion may if you want to run that or the or yeah. the or the sojourn style where it's a lot more pick oriented orientated where it's a lot more of just like hey i want to get that pick first it can't be anything like that there's definitely a lot of options but i feel like the overwatch community we're kind of lame we like playing brig um, oh God, and, no, no. and I think, yeah, I, unfortunately I hate to say it, but I think we're going to see Brig instead of Zen. I don't think oh, we're going to, we're going to see any sort of Zen play today as we do have Nepal and our, both our teams are now here. So we will be able to go in shortly and, uh, we're, we'll see what point we start out. And I think depending on the point, we can definitely see some pretty varied compositions here. We could see many different kinds of play styles. Yeah, we could. Like we were talking about it beforehand, Tem uh, Temple is very different to Village. Village is a lot more Brawl heavy, very Reinhardt heavy, as it looks like we're going to the indoor first. And of course, I think out of all three Ooh. maps, I think this would be the best one for Hog if one of these teams want to pull it out. But I would be surprised if we don't see it because of this thing. And it looks like we're going to be seeing sort of the same thing. The the, the Sigma comp on both sides. I would be surprised. Krakens are coming out on the May sim but I'm, i would be surprised that if kilroy's just using the sim to tp his t tp their team out and then switching over to the social whereas frost nova they're not dealing with that may they're going full damage with the with the bastion sojourn definitely could be as both these teams are going for this sigma composition here you know very stand we're seeing bastion we're seeing bastion may sim you know that's kind of been the standard that we've seen really across all of pro play and we're gonna see some sojourn too but, you know, that's kind of like the four DPS that you really see in this sort of style of composition now. As Krakens, they are able to get to the high ground little pillar area first. Um, so Frost Number, they're going to have to play a bit slower here and try and get positioning here as Luke Kilroy gets almost gets a lot of damage onto Frost Nova. As now Krakens, they are pushing in now, trying to force Frost Nova back. Icicle is forced now, but... Uh, we can see, okay. 
as uh, Frost and Nova, they're kind of, they were able to stabilize there, and both of these teams are back to a neutral right now, and both these teams are kind of just waiting for cooldowns to be exchanged before they go in. Yeah, it really is. And also, as Arson gets one HP and oh. almost dies there. But really, what you want to do is you want to try to hope that Arson takes that poke. But Kraken's pushing up. They're down. They're not scared of anything. If, with that May, it's a lot easier to push up. As they do fall, Arson does find a pick on an Aristotle. And it's just all now all blue in the kill fleet. They fell. Kraken's fell into Frost Nova's trap. They really did. And they just let Frost Nova play their super slow play style. And once they got up the cooldowns they needed. They were able to push him with that Lucio speed, and look, Rook's cleaning up these skills here, getting two. Yeah, it really is, and also with that May, that's one thing you really want to try to do is just push up and get that get that sort of aggressiveness going, especially using your wall. And with, with Frost Nova's comp, they want, to, they want to sort of consume that damage. Obviously, they don't really have all that great of a healing output with just Mimi on the Baptiste. But now they have that window and they have that beat, as well as that, as well as they're close to that amplification, uh, the the artillery strike, so it could be massive for them as we see the amplification major come out from the side of Frost Nova. Frost Nova, they do have that space right now. We're cracking that to push in. Oh, Kilroy gets a crucial kill on the Mimi, so that's really your main source of healing for Frost Nova. And Kraken take full advantage of it, pushing in, getting rid of Rook and Hatter now, and they're going to secure the point in a pretty decisive fashion. Yeah, they really are. And also, too, Momo, Momo had their had their beat. They decided not to use it since they're on the wrong side of the wall. So they're just like, hey, we're just going to keep it for this next fight. Use it for that engage. And especially, too, since Krakens, they only use the Evocation Matrix. They have the, those other four ultimates. And we've seen a lot of the times these May Freezes could be massive as we, as we see Waggler just sort of sitting here waiting for them to walk through. All the trap is already set. And Dong Waggler takes full advantage, getting rid of Momo. And Mimi is about to get a cleanup. There you go. So that's the entire back line of Frost Nova eliminated again in Krakens. They have gone two subsequent really good fights on their hand. Yeah, and I'm surprised too that Frost Nova, especially Hatter, didn't see Waggler just sort of sitting there with that with that Maywall just ready for ready to pounce, especially since they were using that that uh, artillery strike. But I, I, going into this, you do have three options for Frost Nova. You're using the flux right away. You're making sure you don't get rocked out of it. But the beat does come out, so Krakens are still going to be at full strength heading with this fight. Kilroy has his overclock ready as well as Kingpin has that flux and it comes out. Oh, it gets canceled in the process. And now Frost Nova, they pop the beat from Momo to try and push in and secure the point. But Kraken, they don't really care, it seems. But oh, Momo gets rid of Aristotle. And now the fight's really coming to the point now where Kraken, they, they have to contest now. But look, it's turning towards Kraken now. Oh, the boop almost there does not quite catch. Oh, but there you go. Kingpin is now down. It is really up to Kilroy and Dong Waggler to get rid of it. and But no, that's going to really be it. It's coming down to a basically a 1v1 on the point. And oh, there you go. Arson cleans up the rest of Krakens. Yeah, that's exactly what you want from your soldier. Just start taking that off angles, making sure you're not really getting pressured. And that's something that Kraken sort of faltered on right there. They were focusing on the main core of it with Rook and Hatter and sort of trying to focusing on them, ta on them taking it out. Whereas Arson was just able to sit on the sideline, just use their overclock and was just able to pop shots here and there. Krakens are opting to basically flip the map on Frost Nova again for the second time here. They have this window ready. They got to look for it as, you know, they're pathing around trying to meet Frost Nova on that pillar. And both window has been popped for Mimi. So that's going to delay Krakens a little bit here as they're going to wait it out. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't use the window a little bit further back to try to get the point as the window comes out for the side of Aristotle and Rook is just in the oh. in the fight right now, gets gets done and gets absolutely deleted. So now it's Kraken's point with just so just under 80% left. If you're Frost Nova, you gotta die early. Or you or you could try to turn this fight, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Yeah, it does not as Krakens clean up and basically I don't think you're even gonna be able to get a contest here. They got about eleven percent now, ten percent and Really, it's going to be up to Arson or Momo here to get here in time on the point, but we'll see. Waggler pops the blizzard now. Oh, Rook's frozen. That's going to take your tank out of the fight, which you would really need for that recontest, but now it's just Arson on the point here trying to stall it out. Kilroy is there with the overclock, so they are going to have to kite that a bit, but oh, Arson has been eliminated, and I don't think anyone is going to be able to touch the point at this point. And it, yep, it looks like Krakens are going to take the first round here on Nepal. Yeah, as soon as as soon as Krakens got over the eighty five percent, you had to die because either way, you weren't going to get a touch with your full team. You were only going to get a sort of partial touch with only one person. But Frost Nova, they that that point ends up flipping to the side of Krakens. Frost Nova, they try fighting it, trying to get it back. 
as we see a replay here of that first fight, just be able to keep Rook alive. And this is the one thing you need to do. Your, your May got caught out a little bit with the Icicle and just ended up falling, but Arsen being the real sort of, I would say they're sort of the MVP for Frost Nova, trying to keep them alive. And then there's just the turning point. You had to die there fast and early, but it's just one of those things where you got to take a look at it as we see some switches coming out for both sides. The The main brawl is coming out for now both sides. Both are sticking to that brawl. As I said, oh, that on Nepal, no. you can run a variety of compositions. And Frost Nova take a little bit more of an efficient route, but it seems like they don't want to establish themselves on the point first. Okay, now they do. So they are going to get control of that point first, and Hunter is going to have that time to build up this Simbeam, which could do so much damage to Kingpin's shield. And look, Kingpin's already down to half HP. And Krakens are going to have to pay this fight slow if they want to get on the point. But there they go. They move in super aggressively. Trying to take the space back. And not really a trade yet. Krakens are maybe not getting what they wanted out of that little fight there. Both w lamps have been traded. And oh, Waggler overextends. Does not back up with the rest of their team. And that's going to really punish them now as Kingpin and Mello get cleaned up here. And yeah, Aristotle falls as well. And that's going to be Krakens falling. Yeah, I don't know if we do have a replay of it, but if you looked at the very beginning, Kilroy messed up their TP, so they basically just put it three inches in front of their own face, so they didn't get that efficient TP spot, like the side of Frost Nova, who took a little bit of a different pathing. They went towards sort of towards the main point, whereas Frost Nova was trying to get towards that bridge, and they just ended up messing it up. So now they're going to try to engage from this top point with basically zero ultimates online, whereas Frost Nova have two, almost four ready up. Rook is awaiting to use their shatter now. As Krakens, they pop. Actually, no, it is Frost Nova who popped the sim wall, so that creates a little bit of space, but oh, oh no, Rook. Rook tried to go for the shatter, but he gets blocked by the sim wall, and oh, crucial wall there from Arson. But oh, it's a massive shatter from Kingpin. That's gonna allow Krakens to take the point here. The, you know, Krakens, they finally flip the point at 49%. Yeah, and Frost Nova, to try to hold on to that point, they used four of their five ultimates. The only one they didn't wow. use was Arson's May, since they didn't have it. They're only at 83%, whereas Krakens, they, had used, they did use three of their, but again, they, that's one less than the side of Frost Nova. They only used their three. They have that beat now for the next engage and for that May phrase, as also Waggler has 86%, as we see that TP come in from the side of Frost Nova. Arson almost has this blizzard right now, as you said, at about 90% now. And that's going to be Frost Nova's only ult to retake here. But Krakens, they don't have much more either. They have a beat, and they're going to have the blizzard as well. So, But, oh, you can't push in if you don't have your tank. That's going to give Krakens what they want here. Waggler walls off Frost Nova, and that allows them to get rid of Hatter. And that's another one fight for them. Yeah, it really is. Rook falling first, that cannot happen. If you're Mimi, you gotta try to keep up your tank no matter what. Obviously, I think they were pushed back a little bit so they couldn't go in and Rook just sort of got separated a bit, but now you gotta make sure like, hey, it's basically two fight territory now with both teams being over 50% on the point. Still, Frost Nova only had their Blizzard as their only off option. When Krakens, they're probably gonna build a Shatter and they're gonna have their window for this fight. So they have so much more to work with here and that's not good considering they're up one already as they push in. Oh, Frost Nova gets so much off of Arsene's Blizzard. Gets rid of two, but it's now seemed to have stabilized a bit and Kingpin gets rid of Hatter and Kilroy converts it onto Mimi. So now it's about back to even, but can Kingpin survive? I don't know. Oh, the Shatter gets blocked by the May Ice. And yeah, that's, that's not good if you are Kraken's there. Yeah, that was great pathing by the side of Frost Nova. Arson pushing up together with his team. They TP up top. So that's the one difficulty with the with the sort of strategy that both teams are playing was basically just holding that point. You can sort of path on top and sort of mess with their sense of perception as Krakens are just trying to push in immediately with this. I'm guessing this wall is going to be the first ultimate used and instead it's the application matrix. Watch for that shatter. Oh, not again. Unfortunately, gets blocked again and Kingpin just takes full advantage. Moving in to secure the point and Krakens, I don't I don't think yeah, Frost Nova, they're not even gonna bother to contest and they're gonna really try and just regroup in time because this is last fight territory for Krakens. Yeah, it really is, and especially too, since Hatter died late, they they're they are gonna get at least one touch, but it's gonna be very, very close as a whole group. They do have that wall, they have that application matrix, two ultimates that could be turn that could be great turning points for Frost Nova using that application matrix to, to deal more damage, as well as that simul to make sure like, hey, we're not doing it, but the ice school gets taken out early for oh, the side the of Arson. Pin! 
Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Kingpin has had so many of these crucial pins to start these fights. And now Kraken's Age looks so firm on holding this point, though. Kingpin's shield is low, but oh! oh! Another massive shatter onto the back line of Frost Nova, and that's going to secure the first map for Kraken's here as they go up 1-0 in the series. Yeah, and that was a great play by by Kingpin there, just realizing, hey, they don't have their freeze. I'm just going to go in full throttle, get a pin onto wow. Arson. The one player that's like, hey, I'm just worried if they have that if they have that ice school, which they ended up not having. And Hater 2 getting play of the game here. Just This first fight was just insane for Frost Nova, getting there first, making sure, hey, we can beam anything. But at the end of the day, Krakens are the one that takes the map to nothing and look fairly strong on it as well. They did falter a little bit here and there, but nothing too, nothing too Montaigne something nothing too i can't talk today nothing too extreme that you're like hey that could have been going either way they look pretty dominant on both sides a lot of these fights went one way and then went the complete other direction so it definitely was not a full-on one-sided i will say one thing i did not expect to see was kingpin with those pins I think there was probably three or four on that second round alone, just on that Reinhardt, that probably secured an opening pick for Krakens. And I think that won them probably three fights. That may have actually have been the Crucial Decider, as well as these Shatters. I mean, I think there was a big difference in these two Reins' plays, where, you know, we saw Kingpin landing Shatters very consistently, where I think every Shatter that Rook put out unfortunately got blocked. So. You know, unfortunately, those kind of things do make a difference in these maps. You know, Ryan v. Ryan is a very important part of the raw composition. Yeah, it really, yeah, it really was. And also, too, one thing you got to worry about is how fast you're getting those shatters. And I think Kingpin got, I think, three shatters off, whereas, whereas yeah. Luke only got two. So it's one of those things, too, where it's, it, it is one, but that one is the difference. They did use one, and they got blocked by a May, by a May block, but... It's one of those things too where it's like just the amount of ultimate sets you're getting especially as a reinhardt you can build that up very fast as you're hitting your fire strikes and hitting those those big cleaving hammers but it's one of those things too where the more you have the more easier it is for your team to win those fights especially since you have that big of an ultimate that frost nova on the back of the reminder sort of worrying about is like hey do they have that shatter do they not we got to play a little bit safer here since they have it and it's something too that can mess with your mental a bit more I know when we were in that second round, you were also talking a lot about how the back lines and the supports are really the backbone of this composition where, you know, the Rhine is that forerunner, but if you don't have a strong backline who can support your Rhine, that's where it really crumbles in that specific composition. I think in, in general compositions like that, but more so in Brawl, where it's really, really about that Reinhardt and enabling them to create that space where then your DPS can use and pop off what we saw with the blizzards, with headshots, and... You know, the DPS really used the space of their tanks well. And we saw some great plays from them with blizzards and all that. Yeah, it really is. And also, too, it goes all the way back to Overwatch 1, where you saw the Lucio change. Where Lucio used to basically be, like, if you were in his LOS, you were getting that speed boost. You're getting that speed boost, you're getting that heal. They changed it, so now it's only within a certain parameter. So now you got to be a lot more condensed on a lot of those teams. So it's like... You get one big swing, especially with the Reinhardt. If you're hitting your shots, you got to make sure, hey, my Baps is here, but he's not too close where he's going to get hit by this. It's a lot of different, like the spacing of these teams need to be perfect. And Krakens, yes, they had a little bit of these faltering moments where, hey, their backline got picked off first. Oh, their Rhine got picked off first. But at the end of the day, they were still fairly combat. They were still fairly close together, especially on those different attacks that we saw coming through that high ground. All five players of the side of Krakens were very close together, and like a well knit group coming off that coming off that high ground at the same time, making sure, hey, we know what we want to do, and we're not gonna we're not gonna let Frost Nova change it, anything like that. We saw very good rotations from these teams too. We saw a lot of creative decisions and choices made by these teams. We saw the flipping of the map on the first round where they opted to go like all the way around. And that definitely took some long fights where we'd see sometimes where they forced the point. I don't know if that was, I think that might've been Krakens who did that more where they would force the point and then Frost Nova, they would have to contest at some point. It worked better than I initially thought it would. I thought they'd just be able to spam them out. But with the way these compositions were structured on both sides, it actually worked a lot more in their favor. Yeah, it really did, and especially too on that first point. You have to sort of, especially using that Sojourn, going back to that sort of Sigma Bastion Sojourn. A lot of teams run the Sojourn or over the Bastion or the Bastion over the Sojourn because of different sort of playstyles you want. The Sojourn, like I said before, it's a lot more picky. It's a lot more, hey, we got to get a pick here and then we can engage. We got to get a pick here and then we can engage. Whereas Bastion is just 
I'm just going to press a button and just put damage in your way. And I don't care how you stop me. Like it, it depends on how you play it. I think both these teams are playing to their strength really well. Both of them sort of using that Sojourn Bastion, that Sojourn Bastion on, on Frost Nova and that Sojourn May on the other to sort of play those different, different positions fairly, fairly well. And at the end of the day, Kraken just come out on top with two points that I think could have gone either way. I think the first one was, a 79 100 victory and this one was a was about the same thing like 70 100 victory so i think both teams one team fight goes a different way could we could be talking about a point three here for nepal i know when you talk about that bastion and then talking about some of the other dps like sim it brings me back to actually one of the games you casted of mine back in last season playoffs um where i really saw the sim on the other team be utilized to really create this pressure from an off angle versus that bastion and Bastion really succeeds when you can just walk into one area and then just anyone who steps in, they're basically melted immediately. Versus, you know, when you run a more comp a composition where you can play those off angles and you can pressure, that's when it really starts to fall apart. Yeah, it really is. And also, too, talking about the sim, I think there's still a lot of different ways that not a lot of people know how to play it. Because like we were talking about, too, on point on the village point, a lot of sims like to just get that beam three charge and just melt people. But a lot of people don't realize that those balls that she gets, they're very fast and they're, they're big damage too. I think it's like one little bit less than 100, maybe like 95, something like that. So you still do a lot of damage with it. So you can take those off angles and get those charge, get that sort of damage in and just sort of TP around. And especially we saw it in the Overwatch League with the London Spitfire last year and this year, just using that team to get aggressive, close that space really, really fast. And a lot of teams don't really think about it all that much, especially if you're running the sort of... I don't want to say brawl heavy, but sort of bunker e style, which we haven't really seen since Overwatch One. But a lot of those teams yeah. running that bunker e style, if they just got TP'd on, it's it's a it's a whole different ball game because you can't really expect it right away. Obviously, now in Overwatch Two, it's a lot different. You have five players, you have one less tank, so it's a lot less predictable and a lot less of being able to full on brawl it that way. But we've seen teams, we've seen teams uh, show success while doing that sort of team sim TP closing that closing that distance very very fast and i think heading into our next game type of hybrid i think we could see it a lot more from both these teams i was gonna say tempo wins but honestly going to hollywood it yeah, that's a totally different map tempo still does win and i will say definitely you can play the bastion comp into the sim if you just run them over before they can get set up yeah that, really that's is. how i won that game and it's it's not always true it depends on your composition we saw a lot on nepal where a lot of these teams they play it was a slow play style when we saw from the way Frost Nova were really playing it, where they would just wait and then exchange a lot of cooldowns. And then as soon as they saw an opportunity, they would go in. And yeah, that's and how they played the map. Yeah. And then, like you said, too, heading into Hollywood, it's one of those maps, too, where it's very vertical differential. You see point mm -hmm. two, you see a lot of dive, you see a lot of sort of poking on the high grounds, making sure, hey, we want to have that high ground control first. Then we can drop down on it. I know yesterday, me and uh, we were casting, I was casting it, and it was just, a, it, there's two different play styles of it. One of these teams wanted to get that high ground no matter what on they were attacking and just push the payload with one of their players. And the other team was like, hey, forget the high ground. We'll take it later. We're just going to five stack the point, make sure they can't see us. We're going to hide underneath that little high ground right there and just basically move the point the entire way. And that's, and that's how they ended up winning the game. And it's just like, you can have these two very different play styles on this map and it, both of them work out fairly the same. Not, I don't want to say the same way, but you can have these two different points of victory, especially with these different team comps heading into in Overwatch 2. Hollywood is a very diverse map where I think you'll see probably two compositions. I don't think you'll see much brawl no. unless you're in the... I, I don't know. I, I think I think there is a point where if you're in Pugs, you would definitely try it or on Gibraltar if you really want to. But mainly the compositions you'll see here are the Sigma and the Winston. Or D.Va, depending on what you like to run. But I, I'm used to seeing Winston, so I think a dive composition could work really well, especially if they're going to run this staticky playstyle. Unless they got a Sigma Specialist or, you know, a really good Sniper player, which I think a lot of these teams do have, which could favor more of the Sigma. Yeah, it really could. And also, like you said, you're not really going to see that Brawl style. You can see it, especially with the very very far distant away change of the ho of hollywood with the elevators they all go up as soon as you touch them now but again you're mainly going to see that dive style you're mainly going to see the sort of that, like that sort of semi bunker with the sigma 
but with Sigma being pretty strong, I wouldn't be surprised if we see both teams run the Sigma here. You can run the sort of the sort of Brawl Sigma as well as the sort of Static Sigma, but also going going to it as well. You can see changes. You can see you can see Diva. You can see Ball as we see here from Tommy, but. And it looks like they're on the defense as well for the side of Kraken. So they're coming out with the ball. I could, be, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see them switch over to the Sigma again. I hope they do because ball isn't all that good right now so they, as they do end up doing it. But this is sort of the same comps that I that I saw yesterday. The Sig, the Sigma with the Torb the uh, the Torb Ash on the side so on the side of defense, and then for Frost Nova on the attacking side, the Sojourn Echo just trying to deal with that the Torb turret with the Echo uh, stickies, and then just trying to get those free picks off for the side of uh, Arson. And the one thing that did change those, we're seeing a lot more Alari on this point instead of different sort of t combos. So no Brig. Thank goodness. <laughs> As I think most of the Watch community would say. We are going to see Yari, you know. She is a big threat with that solar rifle. And she can do a lot of damage and pick someone off. And look, shit has already taken like 400 damage in the first probably five seconds of that fight. And Frost Nova they're gonna try and rotate over. Arson gets rid of Kilroy. That's a crucial pick that they really need. And Frost Nova, they're gonna opt to just push up main, not opting to clear the high ground off. As Krakens, they just drop off of it. And now Frost Nova have complete control over this high ground. Yeah, this is one of those high grounds too that's very, very helpful. Especially after this first point, you have you basically kite the defense into this little cafe. So if you're able to do a lot of damage, like how Edge is doing on the tank, just sort of pick, picking them off, make sure they can't do it as as Tommy almost falls about half HP. But it's a lot of just poking and prodding here, making sure they don't get those ticks. As we see, oh. as we see Edge finally fall, and it's the first pick of the of the of this map so far. That shows the power of the high spam from Kraken. If they're just able to sustain much longer than shit can and as soon as that as soon as they it just took a matter of time and then shit just fell so frost nova if they want to win these fights they cannot just sit there and let kraken just get all the damage in yeah you really can't and now especially with with hater falling they do have the duplication matrix they do have the dupe so it's going to be a little bit easier but there you saw, especially that last fight, just how much healing the Kraken's defense puts out. Both these teams having yeah. this Alari, Alari Bap, there's a lot of healing coming out. So the application comes out, comes out for the side of Krakens and the dupe on to, for Hatter onto the Sigma to try to deal with, to try to deal with both the back lines. There is pro one problem with that window though, as it does not cover the high ground. So Frost over they're kind of just able to do whatever they want on the high ground, but all the flex misses from Hatter to try and get it off in time, but they're gonna clear out that pylon. Potentially giving an opening for Frost Nova oh. to go in, but oh, what a captive sun there. That's going to do a lot of damage, um, but luckily the lamp is there to save them, and that will let them stabilize, and finally they get rid of Waggler, who has been the main person on that off angle, putting pressure onto Frost Nova. But look, Tommy gets rid of Shid, and again, that's your main person who is pushing the space and is really the forerunner of this comp. I don't think many of the members of Frost Nova have been taking space besides them. No, it really isn't. And also, too, heading back to it, only two alts were used for Frost Nova, the Amplification Matrix, and the Dupe. Whereas Krakens, they did have to use three. So Frost Nova, they do have a little bit of an advantage coming into this next fight with about three ultimates online. Arson does have about three percent. But the one thing that the Krakens do have is they have that lava. They have they have that molten core, so it's going to be fairly difficult for Krakens to try to find a spot, and hold on to it, since Waggler can just throw his throw the lava everywhere where they're standing and just make sure, like, hey, you can't stand there anymore. This flux could be crucial here from Tommy, but oh, Waggler gets rid of Mimi, and they haven't even engaged yet. Look at Kilroy now getting rid of Hatter. That is two members of your team down before you even get to the point, and that's not what you want to see if you are Frost over here, as they only have 40 seconds left, and they're trapped between Krakens. What a great kill box set up by them to successfully stagger two members of Frost Nova. Yeah, that really was just ba it's just a nice pinch there from the side of Waggler, just making sure, hey, guess what? I'm going to come right behind you. So you see a swap from Hatter switching off of the Echo onto the Hanzo. Get that little bit more of a spam potential as well as that that little the little arrow here and there that could just get find a random headshot. But again, you only have you have less than 15 seconds remaining and the three ultimates for it as we see we see Edge use that flux and get one. Oh, flex gets Tommy down to help, but Gilroy gets rid of Arson to start the fight. Hatter evens it out with Aristotle, but Kilroy gets rid of Momo, so 
is really an even fight right now. No clear winner yet as, oh, Tommy and Kilroy come alive as well as Waggler to get rid of three members of Frost Nova, basically securing the point here. And Krakens are gonna full hold on Hollywood. What a turn of events for the series. As you see in the as you see in the cop Kilroy is says his team is trolling. That's just because they died. I, I don't think they're trolling. They first held on Hollywood, which in my opinion, it's not one of the hardest points to, to full hold on, but it's definitely not one of the easiest. It's very, very it's very it was one of those maps too that's very difficult to try to be able to get it, but they did it very well. Getting those captain suns, getting those right ultimates. Unfortunately, none of them died because of that implication uh, because of that lamp. But this pinch there, that was really the sort of, I want to say seal setting that also with maybe getting their ultimate blocked, it's just Kraken's just showing like, hey, we can do this very, very well and we know how to run this comp. As on the side for Frost Nova, now on the defense, now they got to try to find something to do it. You see them change it up just a little bit, going to the Ooh. Sig Brawl, but with the Ash instead of the Soldier. So... Is, is Momo hmm, switching? I don't Momo know how switching. to feel about this. Okay, that makes more okay. sense. That was a really weird composition to run. A Sigma it, Brawl with an Ash. Yeah, I think it still is, to be honest. The one thing that Ash, the Ash Mercy combo really like to have, they like to have that lot of damage, but obviously we can sort of tell that Waggler is on the Hanzo, so you don't really need that Ash. Mercy combo to try to deal with that one shot, whereas on the side of Frost Nova, they can get that one shot every once in a while with the Ash Mercy combo. So it's going to be interesting to see how Frost Nova decide to hold this, since again, this is the only this is the only game mode now that can be tied in the in the in the championship bracket. A tie would be a definite sight to see, as I think the Mercy from Momo could be a big difference here. Arson gets rid of Aristotle to start the fight. So not going to be a complete roll to start here. They are going to have to go back to spawn and wait for Aristotle to regroup. As Krakens, they have more of a better, maybe sort of spam composition with that Hanzo Ash, but it's pretty close. Yeah, it really is, and especially too if you're if you're edge right here, you can't be letting your shield die. You got to make sure you time it at the right time, especially with the amount of spam, like you said, can come out. The Hanzo Bastion Ilari, just the amount of damage that can come out from from Ladder. the side of Krakens. It's just insane as it looks like that Krakens are trying to take this high ground and they end up doing so. Oh! Krakens get control of the high ground now and that's exactly what they need. You know, Tommy coming up to the high ground, securing it for their team now as they have firm control and Frosto, they've been forced all onto the low ground now and this is going to come down to a fight on the point to decide who's going to win this map here. And oh, wow, Waggler gets rid of Arson and Krakens, they get that crucial pick that they need, but Momo is able to res it up. Now the captive sun is in from Ashes. It does not convert and they are eliminated by Arson in the process. Amy is down that lamp and Waggler gets another pick on the Hatter. That's another DPS down for Frost Nova here as Shid is able to get that contest on the point and the Bob is able to delay Krakens a bit getting on the point, but Tommy has all oh, the Dragon Strike. That might be what they need. Yeah, Mimi ends up falling. There's a, just an ultimate fest here. Both oh, fluxes and the window oh, come out from the side of Kraken, so they get three. This could be the turning point. Momo does find Mimi, but at the end of the day, it is all blue in the kill feed, and it's just made there contesting the point. We have the freeze, and this could be massive, but Hatter is just trying to stay alive, hoping their team can come back, but at the end of the day, it's all blue, and Krakens go up 2 nothing for, over Frost Nova. What a strong second map. I think we saw the first map and we thought that, you know, you know, this looks like a pretty close series, but they went into this map full health and caps in like two minutes or so. I'm not sure yeah. how long it was, but yeah, not really, really strong map for them. Yeah, not to mention too, Krakens, they picked defense first. So they knew that they wanted to do and they ended up doing it. Just pulling out this defense and doing it fairly well, getting that first hold. And now being like, hey, guess what? We're going to do it now. We're going to cap it in less than two minutes. They basically capped it in half the time. Obviously, they didn't really, They, if they needed to, they did have that full four minutes just to get a tick. But at the end of the day, you don't really need that. But again, just like you said, the amount of Kraken just basically being like, hey, we're, we want to show what we can do. And we, we did it very well. I do have to say, though, you know, the DPS of Frost Nova looked very strong. And they had some moments where they got really crucial picks. 
and stop Krakens from doing what they wanted and taking over the game. However, I don't think it was enough, but they do have a very solid chance in this series. If they can turn those slight moments into, you know, consistent plays, they could have a very good chance at taking this back. Oh, what a rock. Yeah, it really is. And also, too, Krakens are just firing on all cylinders. Like I said, heading into the playoffs bracket, they went 0-3. and three. They had a negative 6 map differential, and now it's sort of showing like, hey, we're hitting our stride right wow. at the perfect time. Like I said beforehand, you got to hit that stride right at the perfect time. And Krakens are like, hey, we're finding our groove finally. We're going to come into this. We're going to we're gonna show them, like, hey, we know what we're doing. We want to be that next one to go advance and make our name in the history books for, the, for, tranquil for Tranquility. As we both said, really, yeah, it does come down to playoffs. You know, you can do as well as you want in the regular season and in the pool play but when it comes down to this that's when you have to show up because it comes down to winning these matches it's single elimination there are no second chances here you have to win the matches yeah it really is and heading into our next map type it is flashpoint so it's Ooh. a sort of newer map point and something like that i don't play it all that much i haven't really played overwatch recently because of stuff in my personal life but saravasa is going to be our next map which it's going to be interesting to see. A lot of these teams have been picking Saravasa. A lot of, not a lot of teams in my, and that I've seen at least or have talked to really like New Junk City. I've been seeing it a few times here and there. I see it like once every few times. But Saravasa seems to be the head and shoulders favorite. What's your opinion on the Saravasa New Queen Street sort of different, differential? I think people hate it because it's a Junker Town map. <laughs> if I have to be honest, you know, people, there's some people on Twitter. They talk about, oh, Junker Town's so beautiful. Uh, I don't know. The map design does not go up to that visual standard. Um, it just it just doesn't hit the same, I think, for people as, you know, a lot of other maps would. Like, Servasa. I think I, I played a bit of Pugs against, you know, I've actually done warm-ups against teams on um, Flashpoint um, with a bunch of just randoms, and uh, it did not go well. So the, the caliber of play, I will say, of these teams playing Flashpoint in scrims and tournaments is so much higher than you will get in a unranked or comp game. It's it's incredible how they play the, the game mode. And I just, I can't wait till we see and maybe another like six months, how it will have evolved. It, it's going to be insane. Yeah, it really will. And also too, the new map point, the new map type that's coming out soon. I can't remember it off Flash. the top of my head. Flash, Flash. it's yeah. basically, it's basically for all the COD players out there, it's basically momentum from Modern Warfare 3 and War from World at War. Basically, pick a point in the middle. You got to fight for it. I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited for that when it comes it out. It looks really cool. But yeah, but going into Flashpoint, going into sort of the opinion between the two, Saravasa is the map pick. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what these two teams do decide to pick. We saw the Sigma come out for both teams. We saw the, the Reinhardt come out. And I think also as well with Junker, with the New Junk City, with New Junk City, it's a lot more brawl centric. You want to run that Ryan. There's a lot more different tight, tight corridors. I feel like on that map, where Saravasa, it's a lot. It's a little bit more wide open. It's not that much more wide open. But you can have these opportunities where with the Sigma Cop, you can sort of poke from different sides. You don't have to basically be going through these very tight corridors that you need to have a Reinhardt main just sort of bash your head into it. I will say there are two heroes that I expect to see. Sojourn and May. They thrive on this map. May is so good at controlling these chokes and isolating someone. I mean, it doesn't really matter the Flashpoint map. They have they have chokes. They're not like super, super strong, but they're a lot stronger than you're probably used to in Overwatch 2. I think if you go back to 2CP, it's definitely a difference. It's definitely nicer. But it's so strong at isolating a tank, isolating a support, and then just collapsing with that brawl comp. And with the Sojourn, I mean, I don't know why, but Flashpoint just seems to be a map where Sojourn thrives. I've seen so many good plays on this map. There's so many good spots for a Sojourn to hide out in. Pop the E and just land a great right click. Yeah, it really is. And also, too, one of the things heading into this map, heading into Saravasa, it's going to be interesting to see what these two teams come out with especially like you said you're probably you're more than likely to see that may sojourn but we can see with, with the ryan or with the sigma depending on what these two feel like but it's also too it's one of those things where it's basically whoever caps the point point first more than likely will win it i feel like i think i've seen it only a few times it really get flipped whereas we see the sigma come out for the side of frost nova the ryan is coming out for the side of krakens but again kingpin okay is kingpin messing with me or are they actually going to stick with the soldier or with the jumper queen 
I did see it, but that was a couple of months ago, so I'm not sure if this is this is real. I've seen some people play Junker Queen, but Junker Queen has kind of been out of the meta for a little bit now. As potentially we could see it as a pick that they're going to stick with. It looks like they will as Kingpin is still on that Junker Queen and Frost Nova, they're opting for a very standard Sigma May Bastion composition. Yeah, but at the end of the day, Kingpin decides, hey, you know what? I'm just going to stick with the Reinhardt, just going to troll a bit. But it looks like Krakens, they do get to the point first. They are going to have that little bit of advantage, like you said, with the May trying, being able to single teams out. Oh, look at that. The Great Wall from Waggler. And oh, they're going to get rid of Hatter. That's a crucial member of Frost Nova. Really the center point of the Bastion composition. I mean, it's literally called the Bastion composition. So if you have no Bastion, you're going nowhere. Yeah, it really is. You can't let Hatter die first. And as soon as Hatter dies, Frost Nova, they're just like, okay, we're going to S key out of here. Try to get out. They do almost get a pick on the Waggler. They do fall fairly low. But at the end of the day, hey, Krakens have that first point. And they're close to that Shatter being just at about, just at about 70%. Where the, the closest for Frost Nova is Epic with about 65. Arson's looking to enter this point with their... Oh, not again! Oh, that is not what you want to see if you are... Frost Nova, but for Krakens, they are doing a really good job at killing this Bastion before Frost Nova is even getting in, and hopefully they do not use their ultimates. Oh, okay, definitely an overcommitment, a unnecessary ult. Great shatter, but definitely was not needed, and probably could have been used in a later fight. Yeah, it really could have. But also too, with Flashpoint, you do have that little bit of a faster tick point. So this could, this this basically could be a one fight territory if they don't end up yeah. coming back. It could be the turning point. But again, like you said, it was a little bit unnecessary. But at the end of the day, they're gonna get that that shatter fairly quickly, especially with uh, Frost Nova playing that little bit of brawl cup. As we see a swap pattern off of the Bastion onto the Soldier now instead. Yeah, I did not think of that point of using that shatter to potentially stagger them out. But oh, look at the flex from Shid. Oh, it does not manage to catch anyone, but they are super low because of it. And that lamp does keep them alive, but maybe not for too long now. But look at Frost Nova. They are really, really low. But they do manage to get rid of Mello now. And Wyler has his blizzard out. Oh, it looks like it's huge catching Shid. But they will be kept up. Maybe? Nope, not quite. As Frost Nova, they still have a slight advantage here. But look at that. Krakens, they're turning it super quick. Oh. Kilroy with that overclock getting rid of two. Can they make it three? Looks like the Icicle is going to save Arson for a second here, but maybe not for long as Kilroy does eliminate them now. And Krakens, they get the first point. Yeah, that's exactly why you have the Sojourn over the Bastion. You have that pick potential, like I've been saying. Kilroy basically turning on the overclock. I was going to say, like, hey, that's a little bit of our overcommitment. This is basically a lost fight. But at the end of the day, they end up getting it 100-0 as we head into point B, the Garden Point. Something that we've seen a lot of different teams struggle with trying to be able to take this point. Frost Nova for the time being don't have all five members. They are going to get them shortly as Krakens. They didn't opt to play super, super fast to try and take advantage of that. They probably did not know that was up as Arson now has the Blizzard out. They do get a bit isolated from a boop. But oh, a massive shatter catches three members of Frost Nova. Kingpin again showing how good they are at Ryan just with these amazing shatters securing these fights single handedly. Yeah, and also, too, I think I heard at the very end, Hatter using oh, the overclock. The stagger comes out for the side the of the zoom edge. for it. The zoom <laughs> for it, just trying to make sure. But hey, that could be, that's massive for the side of Krakens getting that point about to, I would say, probably 35, maybe even 40% now before another fight comes on. And especially, too, with, with Edge having that flux, it could be fairly difficult for the side of Frost Nova to come back and take this fight. Frost Nova, they're still opting for the Bastion. So they do switch it up a little bit now as Aristotle has this window ready and really could be crucial at stopping Frost Nova unless they can get in first. It just comes down to who goes in first as the Flux is out, Beat is out from Frost Nova, both alts on the field, but both beats are popped, so no one's going down just yet. But Kilroy gets a crucial right click onto Momo, taking them out of the fight as Aristotle gets rid of Shid now. And that's gonna be the big turn. They're up three now for Krakens and now it's 85% and counting, and I don't think they're going to be able to touch. No, they really aren't, especially too with Krakens pushing up, making sure they can get these spawns. As we see a switch come out from Frost Nova, Edge is going over to the Reinhardt instead of the Sigma, and again, this is just, this is rough. This is Krakens being like, hey, it's our point to give, but now we are heading to a little bit of help for Frost Nova, heading into Temple, 
They're basically there already. They just got to try to hold on to it. But Kilroy does have that overclock. And last time they had it, they popped off, ended up winning the fight for the side of Kraken. So this could be an early ultimate fight. Frost Nova is given a little bit of lifeline by the Overwatch gods, getting a point that is closer to them. So they will get established on it first. But Kilroy does have this overclock, as you said. But also, look, Kingpin has the Shatter and Waggler has the Blizzard, which this could prove disastrous for them as now Waggler pops the Blizzard. Oh, but look, Shiv gets isolated from the rest of their team now. And look at that, Kilroy moving in with Aristotle to clean up Frost Nova. And despite getting the point, to the point first, Krakens are going to cap first. Yeah, that's the one thing as well. Edge just needed to play with their team. They, they played a little bit aggressive, and, and like you said, heading into this map, the mage just was able to use the wall and to isolate him completely. It, it just ended up being the turning point for Krakens. They did, I would say, overcommit a little bit with Kilroy using their overclock instead of just keeping that freeze and basically winning that fight, but they do have Kingpin Shatter, which we've known to be fairly big at oh, points, arson. especially being a big turning point. Arsene and Hatter are already half HP before going into this fight. And the turret form has already been popped. And Kingpin has the shatter ready. Could be another crucial thing. And oh, oh my oh, God. are you serious? Wow. Now that's how you do a shatter right there. Kingpin. Really the ultimate MTD right there. Look at that. Rook had to comment on that. Wow. The turn shatter. I love doing that. What a great shatter from them. Single-handedly securing the point and probably the map here as Krakens, they're going to go up 3-0 unless someone from Frost Nova can touch in time. Yeah, and Momo looks like they're able to touch, getting it 96% and stay alive as well. They do have to fall oh. into Kilroy, but, but Edge is here to try to keep that turning point. They're close to that shatter. Both application majors come off from both sides, and it's just an all-out fight as Melo finds another one to try on Mimi. That's her main healing gone, and now it's all oh. going to be all blue again in the kill feed. It's all blue in the kill feed as they clean up the rest of Frost Nova and Krakens in a 3-0 on Servasa are at match point and Frost Nova, they're on the verge of getting sent home. Yeah, they really aren't. It's exactly what Frost Nova don't want to happen. Kilroy just being just being amazing as Mello gets the play of the game. I think they I think they stole it from Kingpin as we see Kingpin Shatter here just pooping people off of the map. I, I mean I think that's a little bit of a, of a, of a play wow. of the match seal. It kind of is. And I think we saw with these last two points, it was 100 0. Yeah, and it, it. Sorry. It really. Yeah. yeah, no, you're okay. As it really <laughs> reflects on these past two maps where Krakens have looked firmly in control and Frost Nova, they haven't really been able to regain that momentum. Oh, wow. I, I actually did not know that the first one was 100 0. I thought it was a bit closer, but no. So all three points were 100-0 on Servasa. So Krakens, they're looking in very, very firm control here. And fortunately, Frost Nova, they do have a little bit of a lifeline here. They're going to have a little quick halftime break of five minutes here. And that's going to give some them some time to reflect and hopefully, you know, come back and bounce, bounce, bounce back. Yeah, and really, too, one of the things that I think if you're Frost Nova, you got to think about is how do we stop Kilroy? The, he's been, they've been a menace the entire time so far. Whoa. Kingpin, they have been hitting those big shatters, getting that four man right there. But at the end of the day, it's been Kilroy turning that first point, making sure, hey, we're not going to cap it. This big shatter from the side of Kingpin is just, it, this is really the one thing too that we saw on the first point on Nepal, getting that, getting that big shatter and just basically, I don't want to say breaking the mentals of Frost Nova, but definitely putting a little bit of a doubt in there being like, hey, what are we doing? We should be blocking this. We should be doing this. We should be predicting it. And they just haven't been able to do that so far. I just want to call out to the production gods there. Please put that clip in the next intro video for next season, please. That was that was incredible. And that's kind of like those shatters. They're they're once in a lifetime. Those those are the ones you live for. As uh Karma, do you have anything else you want to say before we head to break here? Uh not really. I think there is an update, though, on one of the games hutting on going on with the MI7, MI7 versus Empire game. MI7 is up 3-0 heading into map Ooh. four. So another 3-0 there. The other three, the other two teams have not recorded any maps. Actually, I lied. Amnesia is up 3-0 overclassified as well. So fairly interesting there. A lot of Asperger versus Dapper Dynasty has not reported yet. So we'll get those when we come on. But again, heading into halftime, I'm excited for it. Excited to see what if Frosto was able to bring it back at the end of the day. Yeah, they'll have some time to reflect here as we'll take a quick five minute break and we'll be right back.